guys, it's Rach. Today I have another book chat for you. As the title suggests, I also have a headband in my hair because my hair is just driving me nuts. And I feel like it makes me look like I'm about five years old, but we're just going to deal with it. I've been reading quite a bit recently. I've just been powering through the books, so I'm going to be sharing with you some more things that I've read. I have my notes here. I'm very proud of myself for still continuing my notes, and I actually have a physical book as well to show you guys, which is exciting because it's usually just Kindle stuff. So you know what? Let's just go out of order and start with my physical book, and I'm just going to bring up my notes so I remember. Um, this is On Our Own Terms by Adelaide Hipwell, and this one was actually sent to me. I very rarely ever get books sent to me, but I was so excited when this showed up in my P.O. box from Adelaide herself. She's actually an Australian author, which is awesome. This book is based partly in Sydney and partly in LA, which is really cool as well. I love it when um, I can kind of relate to books, particularly like if I know where they're talking about, like um, we talked about Waverton and, and just places that I know where they are, which is really, really cool. This is Harriet and Ned's story and it's about a girl who has just, or a woman, who has just broken up with her long-term partner. Her sister lives in LA and she's sort of sort of separated herself from her business because her business was with her partner. She has decided to go and stay in LA for a little while and she meets her sister's next door neighbor who is actually a ex boy band member. So it's kind of like a boy band member grown up. Um, it's almost a little bit like say One Direction kind of things. It's a, it's a boy band that was put together when they were younger um, on like a talent show and then they got really big and then they kind of broke apart. And now he's like 30 and he still makes music and stuff like that. Um, but he doesn't really date or have a real connection with people because of I guess having that famous past and they meet and hit it off and it's sort of about them getting together. It's a really cute kind of romance novel slash kind of chick lit as well. I like the whole premise of like the ex-boy band member thing. It wasn't too overdone or too cliche. They they didn't turn out to be real like douchebags, excuse, excuse my language. It was more about them just growing up and sort of about them getting back together as well and I liked the secondary characters they were kind of set up for their own story as well. It was a nice kind of easy read. I finished it in a day. It was a good debut novel and I definitely think I will continue to read this series. So thank you very much Adelaide. I enjoyed your story. Scrolling on back up to the top of my notes, the last time we talked we were talking about these books by R.S. Gray and I just started to read The Allure of Dean Harper. This is Lily and Dean's story. This was like funny, fiery, easy to read. I liked their relationships and the way that they sort of butted heads and argued a little bit. I've said it before but I like when characters kind of clash and then get together for whatever reason. I just, I feel like it gives a little bit more passion to the story. It can make it quite funny because usually arguments um, especially like arguments between people that are actually like kind of really in love with each other can be quite funny and over the stupidest of things. So again it was an easy read. Um, I did like that series or that sort of duo of books by R.S. Gray. The next book that I read I was I kind of almost held off on this because I as much as I really wanted to read it I also didn't want the series to come to an end. It's More Than Enough by Jay McLean. It had just released I think the last time I filmed and it was Dylan and Riley's story. It was quite emotional for me because I really come to enjoy that group of characters. The friendship that they have reminded me a lot of my friends in high school. I had a good group of friends that was a mixture of both guys and girls. There was some couples but we weren't like everybody wasn't sort of coupled up or anything like that but we just we got along really well and for whatever reason th th this group of friends just reminded me of that. And I think that's what really made this set of books overall. There was, it was very emotional. Um, it dealed with dealt with some quite um, like heavy topics because uh, Dylan has been in the army and is coming back and dealing with um, like PTSD stuff and things like that and then Riley who's a new character um, and a new love interest for Dylan um, in this book was also sort of dealing with her own things. Um, I didn't really want the series to end but there was still a lot of like light-hearted funny moments as well particularly with the, the group of friends. I think that's what made it light-hearted. They're like the, the group text scene if you guys have read the book, the whole where they're all like in a group text, that to me was like one of my favourite parts of the entire book. Really, really liked that one. Drunk Lucy will always be my favourite character. I will ever forever hold her in my heart as one of my favourite book characters and it's mainly when she's drunk. When she's normal it's fine as well. I love the, the love of reading that they have in the book as well because it kind of reminds me of me. I just, I would recommend the series. The first book to me was a little bit sort of OTT, but each book got better as it went along. So 
give the more series a shot. I think you'll like it. The next book I read was The Game Plan by Kristen Callahan. This was book three and it kind of had progressed in time and I knew I'd read the first two books and I knew that I'd enjoyed them but when I started reading this book I couldn't quite remember what had happened in the past because the books had progressed in time. So the first couple of books were actually sort of set in college and then this book was kind of set out of college because it's obviously different characters but all the characters have continued to get older and they're out of college. It is a football type story as well which again I like the sporting references in books I find them interesting. It's Fiona and Ethan or Dexter this story and what's interesting of this is that it's a football player and the football player is a virgin which is an like an interesting all around because it's usually the girl. It's very rare that the popular hot guy is portrayed as a virgin character, but it made it quite interesting. He falls for Fiona, who is the younger sister of his, or the younger sister-in-law of one of his best friends and the characters that we've already met in the previous books. I just think like they had instant chemistry. Um, it was quite like a hot relationship and then it kind of went wrong when he's notoriety of being like a football player just got a little bit too much and then it's kind of about them working to get back together again. It does throw back to the past in a few chapters but it doesn't do it in a way that's overdone or too much. I made a note of that because sometimes that annoys me in books when it sort of jumps forward and back in time. Sometimes it's a bit too much. This didn't seem to bother me um, as well. It doesn't take up too much time of the book and overall I enjoyed it. If you like romance novels, um, it's kind of, I guess it falls into the new adult slash adult category and it does have some football references to it, all the books do because the male characters in each of the books have all been football players. Yeah, definitely give that one a go if that sounds interesting to you. I read another story which is Nuts by Alice Clayton and I've read some of her, her stories before. I think she read the, she read the, she wrote the Wallbanger book and sort of series which I found quite funny. This book um, was Leo and Roxy's story. Um, she's a chef. Oh yes, that's right. Roxy's a chef. She goes back to her small town home to look after her mum's diner for a while. She's been living in LA and being a private chef and she goes back kind of against her own will but to help out her mum and she finds that she really enjoys starting to run the diner and do her own thing and she falls for a local farmer Leo um, even though she doesn't usually do relationships and then there's a little bit of a twist in the book later on and you kind of find out some things that you didn't know that was going on but it was funny and light-hearted and easy to read and I definitely think I'll continue to read the series. This was the first book and you could already see that it was sort of setting up some other character stories. Her friend and his friend seem to be like sort of almost like paired up a little bit in the book so I feel like they'll probably be get their own story at some point. Another series that I have been reading for a little while is the Green Mountain series by Marie Force. This one was the fifth book, It's Love Only Love. This was Ella and Gavin's story. Again, it was a story that had been building in previous books um, as with a lot of series like this when they continue on you usually get to know which characters are going to be paired and come up in their own book at some point. I really enjoy Marie Force as an author. I do find that this series in particular is a little bit, not wishy-washy, but it's, it's one of these really sort of sickly sweet, happy ending, easy. Some of her other series, particularly her, um, her like crime series which name is just escaping me I'm really really sorry but I've mentioned it before her fatal series that's the word I was looking for her fatal series is quite gritty and it has a lot of sort of drama and the story goes sort of has its ebbs and flows and things like that whereas I find that this Green Mountain series is all very happy happy everybody's sort of perfect I mean there are still issues to give the story some kind of storyline to it but it's one of those type of books that you read if you're just looking for something that's just going to put a smile on your face where everything is going to turn out right in the end and you know it's going to turn out all right in the end. That kind of book. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense. Um, it's a simple read. The characters fall into their rom romantic relationship like almost at the very very start of the book. So you, the whole book is really about their relationship. It's not about sort of like they're together for basically the whole time. There is some past issues that they're dealing with. The main character, his brother died in the army and he feels 
some sort of guilt about that, about sort of living his life and moving forward and things like that. It's definitely heavy on the happily ever after, that's what I've written. Um, it's not quite as clever as the Fatal series, I guess is what I'm trying to say. A highly anticipated book for the month of November was November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I love Colleen Hoover, I have read a ton of... Or I, I, Ton of herself. I've read all of her books since sort of when she first started publishing them and really really like hers. This book was um, it's an interesting concept. It was about a guy and a girl who meet on the same day every year and they meet at a point where you can already tell they have instant chemistry but their lives are going in completely different directions and they decide that they're going to meet again the same time next year and see sort of where they're at and see how they're going because she doesn't believe that you can fall in love at 18 which is when they first meet she doesn't want to sort of start a real like forever kind of relationship until she's 23 so it's about them kind of I don't know it's, it's a really interesting concept I don't know if, if anybody would actually do that in real life but I like the idea anyway there is some drama and some times where you're like oh no what's gonna happen but I found that it never stayed on that too long. My, if I could say anything about this book, my only criticism would be that I almost felt it could have been a touch longer, like a bit more time could have been given to each little part because because you only saw one day of each year, obviously a whole year had progressed, but as a reader you almost felt like something just happened and it only happened in a short amount of time and you didn't get to experience the emotion. So if they ended on a bad note, you didn't get to feel that bad note for the whole year because you're automatically at the next year and they might their emotions change or they make up or, or whatever so that would be the only thing I would say but overall I did enjoy it it was a great concept it was a book within a book which I liked as well I thought that was really clever um, I read it really quickly it was very emotional but I didn't actually cry which was interesting because I thought I would it might have been just the um, the mood that I was in or whatever but it has also has loose ties to ugly love as well that's something that I made a note of that I wanted to mention because um, Miles and Tate are mentioned in it very very briefly but overall I did enjoy the story and I would definitely recommend it to you guys. A couple more books to mention I did like I said read a lot. Pretend Your Mind by Lucy Score. This is Harper and Luke's story um, and this one surprisingly enough I did actually cry and didn't expect it. This was a, a longer book. It's about a temporary relationship. Um, she needs a place to stay and he needs a girlfriend for a short amount of time just to get his family off his back before he goes back into the National Guard for another six month stint. I think he goes to Afghanistan or somewhere like that. So it's one of these stories where they're kind of there together for convenience but you can see straight away that they have this chemistry and he tries to fight it but eventually they get together and he kind of remains hard-headed about them having a real relationship until sort of the end and then you sort of get to see their months apart and what happens there and then when they come back together again and him dealing with emotional issues from being um, at, at war and what he does sort of dealing when he comes back and having these also has this past guilt from a past relationship and, and things that had happened and it's about her and this girl who almost has sort of nothing and together they have something and then when he pushes her away that's when I got really emotional because she did everything right and did nothing wrong and she was sort of being punished and yeah it made me cry but all's well that ends well trust me I wouldn't recommend you a book that I didn't like the ending because that's just not me I'm all about the happy ending no matter how long it takes to get there but like I said they had great chemistry I loved all the secondary characters um had a great level-headed heroine which I really really liked sometimes girls could be portrayed quite flighty or over the top or whatever but I felt like she was really realistic there was a little bit of suspense tacked right on the end which kind of worked and one thing I made a note of because it kind of made me feel, gave me the feels, was that part of when he tried to win her back, he won her back by putting Christmas lights all over the house because she'd never had them and honestly that pulled at my heartstrings because you guys know me and I love Christmas and I just thought if a guy did that I'd probably like marry him on the spot. I was just like it was just the sweetest thing. Anyway would definitely recommend that book. It was a surprise. I just found it randomly but loved it. Sacked a gridiron novel by... I don't know because I've written by and haven't put the author's name. Let me look that up for you. It's Sacked by Jen Frederick. Um, this is Knox and Ellie's story or Elliot's story. It was a college football novel again with the football but I really enjoyed it. 
he Knox is, could definitely be a new book boyfriend. He was just like a great guy. Sometimes he almost stretched the boundaries a little bit of being almost too fantastic for a guy, but I went with it. When it's a book boyfriend, you kind of expect them to be pretty much perfect. You kind of liked him so much that you didn't care that sometimes he was almost like too awesome. You just, some, I just wish guys like that really do, do exist. Maybe they do, I just haven't met the right guy yet. The guy being the virgin, again, I don't know where this storyline has come from and maybe that's why it showed up in my Amazon recommendations, but guy, college, football player, virgin. Very, very interesting, but it was a nice twist to the story. I love the team, um, so I can definitely see them getting their own stories and I can't wait to read them. This is why I like sporting teams as um, book stories because I just, I find it, it works really well, like for for series kind of thing, for each, each character to get a story. There was lots of steamy scenes, it was quite like an adult kind of book even though it was set in college. Would, would recommend that one as well, I did enjoy it. And the last book I read uh, for this little book chat is, oh, this little, this one's probably gone for like 20 minutes, this book chat is Lev by Belle Aura, Aurora. Um, Lev and Mina, this is their story, and this I think is the start of a series as well. It's an interesting one, it's kind of got like a, a roughen, a roughen, a Russian mafia like kind of storyline to it or element to it. Um, it's about a homeless guy, a homeless girl, sorry, and a guy who I think might have some kind of autism or he's just, he's somebody who's really, really smart and doesn't relate to the world in the same way that um, a typical person would, which is why I kind of thought, even though it never actually said autism or autistic, that's kind of like might have, like a mild form of autism or something like that, which I thought was really, really nice. It's something cool to see in a book to have the hero of the story be a little bit different and it's a nice way to highlight that there are different people and different have different issues and different things in the world and they can still be like the guy that everybody roots for kind of thing. I like the secondary characters as well, the whole like his whole sort of Russian family was great. You can see that there's going to be sort of maybe more stories for them as well. Um, I was drawn into the story from the very first chapter so I always think that that's a sign of a really good book. There was enough drama to keep the story interesting but not so much that you felt like you were constantly sitting on like a razor's edge kind of thing which I liked. It was definitely adult content and I just I thought it was a good book. Something, something a little bit different that I hadn't necessarily read before. It's still like a guy and a girl and them getting together but the the sort of the Russian slash mafia a little bit elements kind of added a, a light sort of twist to it it wasn't too in-depth in that there was a little bit of violence if you absolutely can't stand any violence at all then it's probably not the book for you but to me it was still that was just a small element it was still mainly just like a romance novel so enjoy that one and that brings us to the end of this book chat I talked a lot and I did promise to try and keep these short and I probably failed a bit at that Sorry. But if you stuck around to the end, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Please share with me any of your book recommendations in the comments below, particularly if you've got any Christmas books. We are now in December and I do love me a good Christmas story, so send them my way. I will have all the books listed in the description box below for you guys, so please check them out if um, you're interested, as well as all my social media links. Come say hi to me there and yeah. I'm going to go now. I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye. This blue neighborhood Never knew loving could hurt this good Oh, and it drives me wild